Let us join responsibly in the call to worship. Today, this day is not like any other day. Today we slow down. Today we take it all in. Today we rest in the This day is not like any other day. Today we are seen. Today we are full to the brim. Today joy cannot be contained. This day is not like any other day. Today the stone was rolled away. Today the women saw the empty grave. Today we know that death does not win. This day is not like any other day. Hallelujah. Amen. Our gathering song is Christ the Lord is Risen Today, number 233. now relive the first moments what according to the gospel of St. Luke, the news of the resurrection of Jesus first came. It was early dawn on Sunday, the first day of the Jewish week. It was also the third day after Jesus had been dead and buried. In those days, it was the custom to honor the dead by placing sweet smelling spices and ointments on the body. Several women who had followed Jesus came to the tomb to do that. Among the women were Mary Magdalene, Joanna, the wife of King Herod's steward, Mary, the mother of James, and Susanna, and several others. This is the saddest thing I've ever had to do. 
I feel the same way, Mary. I don't know if I can bear to see Jesus lifeless, lying in a cold tomb. I still can't believe he's dead. At least we'll be able to see him one last time. I still can't believe Jesus is gone. What will we do now, Mary? You know, I really don't know. For now, all we can do is what we came to do and care for Jesus' body. After that, who knows? Look, everybody. The stone has been rolled away. Did someone arrange this? I thought we were going to have to roll the stone away. Nothing was arranged. I'm suddenly afraid. He's not here. This shouldn't be. What could have happened? I don't know, but it looks like someone has stolen the body. We must find the gardener and see what he might know. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified on the, and the third day rise again. Jesus is alive again? Can that really be so? This is incredible. We must go and tell the others. Shouldn't those women be back by now? What does it matter? They'll be a while yet. It takes time to prepare a body. Jesus, our master, dead, gone. I feel sick inside. He did so much for us, and we did nothing to help him. It's worse than that. I denied him three times, just like he said I would. <clears throat> it's all over now, as hard as that is to believe. I guess it's back to fishing for us. Ah. Here come the women. What are they looking so happy about? Peter, James, John, everyone. The most amazing thing has happened. Yes, we found the tomb empty. At first we were afraid someone had stolen the body, but then we saw two angels. They told us Jesus has risen from the dead. You saw angels and they talked to you? I think the grief has gotten to you. No, really, it's true. We couldn't believe it ourselves at first, but there really were angels. They reminded us of what Jesus himself said, that he'd be crucified and on the third day rise again. And this is the third day it's happened. Jesus is alive again. Did you actually see him and touch him? No, but we're sure it's true. You must believe us. I think your first idea was right. Somebody must have stolen the body. What you're saying is impossible. Nothing is impossible with God. Why won't you believe us? I tell you, what we're saying is true. What you're saying makes no sense at all. Maybe this is worth checking out. I think I'll go and take a look for myself. He's not here. There's nothing but the linen cloths he was wrapped up in. Could the women be right? Could Jesus be alive again? If it's true, everything changes. Do I dare believe it? Do I dare believe it? Do I dare believe it? It was such an amazing moment. I had to ask myself, could it be true? Maybe Jesus really was alive. 
We disciples were all so sad and confused. We just couldn't believe at first what the women were telling us. So if any of you find yourself wondering or doubting about Jesus' resurrection, you are in good company. We were there and heard firsthand and did not believe it. Even when he appeared to us in person, we didn't believe it at first. We thought we were seeing a ghost. Even after he showed us his hands and feet, and even after we began to feel the joy of his being with us, we still had moments of disbelieving and wondering. Is Jesus alive and with us now? Was he really raised from the dead? These are big questions, questions that are at the heart of Christian faith. And it's okay to have these questions. God understands. But if you believe that goodness is stronger than evil, that hope is stronger than despair, that love is stronger than hate, that death is not the final answer in life, that God is present in all things, then your faith is already strong. The power of God's love is with you. The spirit of Christ is within you. I got so fired up over Jesus being alive in a new way that I spent the rest of my life telling people about him. Here is a sermon that I preach that tells the good news in a nutshell. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Amen.
tradition to have a prayer of confession, not to harp on ourselves or to drum up guilt, but because we believe God is not done with us yet. So please join me in the prayer of confession because God is always listening and God's grace is always full to the brim. Let us pray. God of new life, we are a mixed faith. We We want want to be full to the brim with hope and joy, but often we overflow with comparison and doubt. We want to embody the resurrection, but often we'd rather stay the same than to begin again. We want to have courage to be like the women on Easter morning, to run and speak truth, but often we are weary of courage and uncertain of our own voices. Forgive us for all the ways we remain unchanged. Break into our hearts. Overflow here with hope, we pray. Holy God, we so often long for more. We want more than the hamster wheel life of to-do lists and errands, meal prep and alarm clocks. We want more than comparison and competition. We want more than certainty that drowns out curiosity. We want more than fear that leads to violence. We want a life that is teeming with alleluias. We want a life overcrowded with hope. We want a life congested with good news. We want a life jam-packed with forgiveness. We want a life bursting with laughter. We want a life so full that the stone just has to be rolled away. So today we pray, break the dam, dust the cobwebs from our ears, clear space in our minds to hear you clearly. Speak to us as only you can. It's what we long for. We long for you. Our list of people for whom we pray is long, O God, because there is pain in this world. There is illness. And so we pray for Andy, Lois, Bill, Pat, Bailey, Raymond, Brian, Londa, Bonnie, Mike, Jim, Larry, Lynn, Elaine, Marilyn, Joyce, Jamie, Paul, Lucas, Doug, Carrie, Cindy, Carol, Jeannie, Charlotte, Wyatt, Kaya. We pray for all those who've lost loved ones. We pray for the families of Oliver, Anna, Carol. May they in their mourning find your resurrection hope and see that new life is in front of them. Dear and holy God, our world is in turmoil. We continue to pray for Ukraine and for all those affected by war and famine, by natural disaster, by all that ills us. Come to us, dear God, on this Resurrection Sunday. 
infuse new life in us, and send us forth into your world with hope, thanksgiving, and transformation. We have all gathered here on different journeys of life, and so as we pause for a moment of silent prayer, be with us. Hear all that we have to offer you from our hearts, and may you quiet us long enough that we hear your prayer for us. Be with us in prayer, dear God. Having heard us in the silence of our hearts, here is now as we bring our voices together as one and pray the prayer which his Son has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> Family of faith, if there is life after death, then you can be certain there is life after mess. There is life after mistakes. There is life after doubt. There is new life freely given, and that life is for you. You are forgiven, loved, and claimed. May we live full to the brim in response. Thanks be to God, and let it be so. Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> We live the resurrection when we live a life of generosity, a life of hope, a life of grace, a life of forgiveness. We support the ministry of the church, not just to pay the light bill or to pay staff. We support the ministry of the church because we believe in mission. We believe in reaching out and touching our neighbors near and far with our gifts. We believe in making a difference, not only in our community, but in our world. And that's why we live lives of generosity and hope in lives of true resurrection. Thanks be to God for this church, 
Thanks be to God for all of the ministry and mission in which we participate. Thanks be to God for all of you. Amen. join together in the prayer of dedication. God of great gifts, this morning we give you praise and we give you thanks. With the resurrection coming in our hearts, our minds are turned to your song of peace. We joyfully present these gifts to you, a tangible course of thanksgiving, a harmony of hope for a kingdom Amen. And let us respond uh, in, to the affirmation of faith responsibly. We believe in a God who can astound us. A God who created the mountains of Colorado, the stars on a summer night, and the green of Ireland. We believe in Jesus, whose example changes us. An example of love for those on the fringes, healing for the sick, and welcome for the lonely. We believe that Jesus was abandoned by his friends, wounded, mocked, and killed by the state. And in a garden three days later, we believe that life began again, that stone was rolled back as death lost its sting. Ever since that day, we believe the Spirit has been inviting us into an expansive life. A life not measured by wealth or accolades, but a life full to the brim with joy, overflowing with laughter, saturated in hope, and decorated with good news. Death has lost its sting. We believe and are set free. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our parting song is the Day of Resurrection, number 245.
So we gather on this day that we might hear the story of the resurrection. We gather on this day that we might be affirmed in our hope and affirmed in our doubts and affirmed that who we are on this journey of life is valued by God and that we matter. May we go forth into the world on this day celebrating the resurrection in every way that we can and know in our very being that we are God's chosen and loved. Amen. Thank you.